Uh, the group one hydroxides and the bigger group two hydroxides. So strong bases, there's really not even a reaction. There's NaOH, sodium ions, and hydroxide ions. Whatever the concentration of this that you dissolved, that's the concentration of hydroxide you're going to get because of that arrow, the one-way arrow. Now, if you have something like magnesium hydroxide, a smaller hydroxide, that doesn't completely dissociate. So yeah, there's the difference between strong base, weak base. And it's all about the arrow. And if you have a one-way arrow, this thing goes to completion. It doesn't stop until it's done. Does that make sense? You're looking at it like you're not getting it. No, so MgOH2 is a weak base. A weak base. There's a weak base because of that thing right there. And that's all the determinants. Now, when we look back down here, what I have written up here does not look like what I have down here. Uh, and that's because, mm, look at my, this is not so common when we try to deal with bases. Amine compounds or conjugates of weak acids, this is going to be more common. So I'm giving you something that's not wrong, but you're not going to see this as much as you're going to see these. Now, I'm throwing the word amine out there again. Amber, I know the chapter four was a long time ago, but even before that was chapter 22, the organic chapter. You remember amines? Yeah, they're organic compounds that contain nitrogen. <laughs> well, you said you didn't remember chapter four. Remember oh. what I said? That's why I'm calling I you up. Okay, so anyway, uh, an amine compound is something with NH2. And uh, this squiggly thing here represents uh, some carbon chain. Does that come back to you? Just say yes, even if it doesn't. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Good. Okay. The thing about an amine compound, the N has a lone pair of electrons. That's a little negative cloud. And N is very small and very electronegative. Uh, and so it's got that negative cloud that it's kind of clinging to. And that can attract the hydrogen ion. You got this positive hydrogen ion that comes along, and that's small and that's small, and so they seem to get together very well. They join together, and that's why an amine would be a good base. They're not real strong bases, but when you look up the KB table in the book, almost all those compounds are amines. All right. Now there will be a lot more about this. Don't think, don't don't think that I'm trying to, to flood your brain right now. I know it's the day we get back from break, and you're thinking, man, there's a lot here. Yeah, but we're going to go through this more slowly than what it looks like. And I'll be coming back to all this. Okay, and then it says either an amine or the conjugate of a weak acid. So if I were to put something like, um, I'll put it over here, the nitrite ion into water. This is the conjugate base of HNO2. This has the ability to take a hydrogen ion. It's not strong uh, because there's only a few strong bases. Those are the group one hydroxides and the bigger group two hydroxides. So this is a base, but it's not strong. So we're going to use the equilibrium sign. And always remember what a base does. It accepts a hydrogen. So the water offers up one of its hydrogens to it, uh, and it makes HNO2 plus, and then the water, what's left of the water, is the hydroxide ion. Now, that which I wrote over there is consistent with this. I started not with a neutral thing over there, but I started with a negative thing. You notice the base gains the hydrogen ion, so its charge goes up by one. That started as negative, and it, the charge goes up when it gains the hydrogen to, to neutral. So this will be consistent. We'll have to write these chemical equations. It'll be difficult at first, but you just have to practice. We, we will write a lot of equations for acids and bases. And uh, you know, at first it's hard, and as you do more, it'll be easy. Oh. Okay. I think this is the last slide I'm going to get to today. Oh, no, no, I just want to introduce pH and next slide. OK, so um, water by itself. 
This hopefully looks familiar to you because when we do Chem 1 acid base chemistry, there's always this. When water is by itself, just sitting there as a liquid, it will start to dissociate and dissociate just a small amount. And then it comes to equilibrium. But that little tiny bit of dissociation is a big deal. And uh, this is what we come up with. Water, uh, and this is not something that, that uh, like scientists have tried to make water do. This is just what we observe that it does. Every sample of water, when you have a sample of pure water, it's not really pure. Because a few of the water molecules are going to break apart. And you're going to get some hydrogen ions and some hydroxide ions. It just happens. Because it only happens to a small extent, that's why I drew the arrow like this. It's a two-direction arrow. It comes to equilibrium. Just a little tiny bit of water uh, dissociates and then stops. So we have an equilibrium constant. We call it Kw. Now this K uh, is called Kw, and I made this a different color just to let you know, hey, it's so important that it gets its own name. That W just uh, represents the dissociation of water. And that we would calculate that by taking the hydrogen ion times the concentration of hydroxide ion. And then look what we have over here. And you notice that I didn't put any liquid water in the denominator. You know why, yes. We only, in the K values, or expressions, put aqueous things and gas, gas things. And since water is a liquid, it stays out. So it's just this product times this product divided by one. Any solid or liquid that you have in an equilibrium reaction, when you're writing the K, just replace them with a 1. They won't go into it. Yeah? Is there no unit? Right. There is no unit. Even though the units don't cancel out. There's molarity, that's molarity, but you get no unit. You never get a unit for any K. Any K. No. Nope. For any K? Like, any K? Any equilibrium K. The rate constant K we did. Hey, catch me up, Amber. Okay, so just uh, so that we can have some consistency, this is how we find the Ka of an acid. I think you could do this on your own, but uh, just to make this formal, we have a dissociating acid. I'm, for whatever reason, picking on HNO2. There's lots of weak acids. You're seeing the same one over and over, but uh, you'll, see, you'll see many. So this thing is going to slightly dissociate into hydrogen ions and nitrite ions. Now in this case, the reactant is aqueous, it's not a liquid itself, so that would go into the denominator. So the stronger this acid is, the more products you have, and the higher the K, because you know the K values products over reactants. So the stronger the acid, the bigger the K value. Then finally, for bases, because one of the reactants will always be water when you have these bases in water. Um, remember, water is the liquid, so you need to leave the water out. It doesn't really have a defined concentration uh, where the aqueous things do. So for the KBs, if you have water as a reactant that has to offer up a hydrogen for this thing to take, uh, leave the water out of the K expression. In this example, the NO2 uh, negative 1, this is a base because it's accepting a hydrogen. 
we would consider the water in this reaction to be an acid because it's releasing a hydrogen. So that's an acid and that's a base. And over here, that would be the conjugate acid of that base. That base gains a hydrogen and that would be its conjugate acid. And the hydroxide ion would be the conjugate base of the water. So when you have an acid-base reaction, there's, you can always look for uh, what the conjugate base pairs are. We'll deal with that a lot, too. Yeah. So water can be, well, I thought somewhere I remember water can be acid or base. It could be a base, too. Yeah. Because the hydrogen, I'm sorry, the water molecule could accept a hydrogen ion and become the hydronium, H3O+. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a special name for that. I don't know if you heard that before. We'll get to that maybe tomorrow. Okay, so just we only have a couple minutes left. Um, to finish this off, I want to give you this, and this is all that we're going to deal with today. The pH, the pH scale, calculation of pH, negative log of the hydrogen concentration. Was that very subtle response because I put the word log up there? We're good with logs? Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. You know how the log is just 10 to what power is a number? Mm -hmm. That's what pH stands for, power of hydrogen. Uh, the um, when you take the log of the hydrogen concentration, look at this thing in brackets, that's the molarity, the concentration of hydrogen. Uh, so like if your concentration of hydrogen is 10 to the negative third, the log of 10 to the negative third is negative three. Now that's what that sign is out here. We're dealing with acids which have a very low concentration of hydrogen, 10 to a negative power. So when you take the log of that number, you're gonna get a negative number. That's what that negative sign is doing there, so the pH value should be positive after you run it through that calculation. So if I have a hydrogen concentration of 10 to the negative third, the log of 10 to the negative third is negative three, and the negative of negative three would be positive three. The pH would be positive three. That's the pH scale, yeah? Now we can also determine the pOH, and sometimes it'll be handy to find the pOH of a uh, uh, solution, and that would be negative log of the hydroxide concentration, power of hydroxide. It's just uh, um, expressing the concentration of hydroxide a different way. Um, now, what I have in here, that is so because for any solution, I just lost my uh, computer, I think. Quick 45 minutes, huh? The pH plus the pOH is always equal to 14. <laughs> oh my gosh. Two more. So one of the, one of the questions on the, uh, the, the review was like, if there was an acid spill on your skin, what do you do? And it was like, water, or mix it with like a base, water, and like salt with like NaOH, and like water. Yeah. Uh, you would not want to combat a strong acid spill with a strong base, because the strong base is just bad. I heard it's like a double bad. Yeah, it, that would not help. Uh, that would make it worse. Uh, a weak base, like baking soda, is what you would use. Yes, yeah, which is a base. We'll talk about why baking soda is a base. Yep.